Do you feel lighter? Do you trust that energy you just gave yourself? That's what we have to do because we have choice in how we want to feel. We have choice. So we have to choose a, a practice that gives us a higher vibration. And that's all within you. I know I, I, know I led you to it, but you were the one that had to visualize it. That's, that's your power. That's your healing. That's your inspiration. That's your empowerment. That's your perspective. It's already inside of you. The power is already inside of you. You know, let's move forward. I talked to you guys about seventh grade, but let me talk to you guys about uh, high school. I went to Palatine High School. Anybody go to that school? Palatine High School? Okay. So anybody ever work in Palatine High School? Oh, you worked there? Okay. Let me tell you guys a story, because I like to honor my guest. This is one of my special guests right here. This lady saved my life. So I would like to give you a hug. So proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I won't make you talk. You don't have to talk. <laughs> she saved my life. Let me tell you about this lady. When my parents went through their divorce, I, I had behavioral issues. I was asked. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a little understatement. <laughs> uh, you want to describe it for us, Ann? Uh, he was a frequent flyer. Uh huh. About this club, Pigs Falcon. What What was your role in the school? I was his uh, uh, assistant principal. Assistant principal. So when I got in trouble, I had to go <laughs> to you. Yes. So. Now, the reason why this was a problem is because there's high expectations. I have a very intelligent family. We're all very, very smart. Or well, most of us, not all, not all. Let me, let, me take, let me take that back. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> most of us, we got a little sense in there. Um, but I was in um, accelerated programs and I was like a very smart kid my whole life. I got straight A's my whole life until I got to high school. So then I have, I'm getting F's and D's and C's and I'm getting behavioral issues. Behavioral issues like fighting, fighting teachers, students, myself, anybody, right? But it's like you got to think about what's going on at home to have a child acting that way, right? It was uh, a lot of abuse at home. It was a lot of alcoholism. It was a lot of neglect. It was a lack of love. So, of course, as a child acting out like that, it makes sense. Like, you can look at a child and be like, okay, this child is acting out because they need love. And you gave me that. You gave me that. In fact, there was times that I would get in trouble just so I can go to your office. <laughs> because I would get to her office and she would just look at me like, why are you here? Why are you not behaving the way you're supposed to? Why are you not at this level you're supposed to be? And at the time, you know, you're going through things, that nothing makes sense. But now that I have the perspective I have, I know exactly what was happening. I was operating with all of the unworthiness that was learned around me. My perception of self was no self-love. It was just anger, uh, holding on to anger, regret, being mis feeling misunderstood, feeling unloved. And when you, f when you are that way, you can't be your highest self. So every time I, I would see her, she would literally remind me, you're better than this. You are much, you are capable of much more. But when you're going through your worst, and we all know this, when you're going through your worst, you don't believe that. You don't believe it. But I, I had about this much belief. I was like, you know, if I, if I just go see her, she'll make me feel better. And then it got really bad because school was ending my sophomore year. I'll never forget this. Maybe, maybe you forgot. No. But, no, you didn't forget. Okay. <laughs> I'll never forget this. Sophomore year. I think it was a home economic class, actually. Uh, so we were, getting, we were in there cooking or something. And one of the other kids said something to me, and I didn't like what he said, because it was kind of racist, and I didn't like that. And so I decided to fight him. And I picked up a chair, and I was trying to hit him with the chair. I'm like 16 at the time, okay? I was trying to hit him with the chair, and then one of the teachers was holding me back, and she was like this little lady. She's like, stop, don't do nothing, she, right? And so I get sent to the office, and like she said, I was about to get expelled from high school. And 
It was me, you, the superintendent of the whole district, and my mother. And they literally set me down and they said, Sylvester, why should we let you stay at this school? You're one of the worst people here. It's pretty much exact, exactly what they said to me. Do you know what I said? Do you remember what I said? This is also during finals. Who gets in trouble during finals? It's the last week of school. So I remember what I said. I said, well, I really want to just play football. And I was not allowed to play football um, because of when we moved to the school, I missed a lot of credits. So I couldn't play my freshman and sophomore year. So I remember telling them, I said, I just want to play football. And the main reason I wanted to play football is so I could get out of the house because I didn't want to be in the house with my crazy parents, right? And so the superintendent looked at me and he, of course he doesn't want me in the school. She did though. And the superintendent said, well, I don't really want you in the school. And she's like, no, we're going to keep them. We're going to keep them. So she was fighting for me. She was one of the first people I ever saw outside of my family that fought for me. Now, every person in here, every single one of you, you have someone who's fighting for you. Every single one of you. It may not be every single day in your face, but they want, there are people in your life who want you to be at your highest level. And you owe it to them. You owe it to honor them and to honor that energy they're giving you to be at your highest level. When I was, when I was homeless after college and my auntie Bryn said, you know what? You can come sleep in my basement because you don't need to be out on these streets. Never asked me for anything. She saw greatness in me. She believed in me. She helped raise me. And when I was done living at your, in your basement, you, do you remember what you told me? Because I asked you, like, what do I owe you? What do I need to give you? And you said, my family, they call me Junior. She says, Junior, you need to go live your life. That's what I need from you. Yeah, we can. Yeah.